Yeah, in this one you get superpowers. And you st a lot of the old things you did in the game you still do, except now you do them with superpowers. One of which is my favorite minigame... I think basically everybody's favorite minigame, Insurance Fraud, where it's, it's the go-play-in-traffic game if you've never played Saints Row. And, yeah, you go... You throw yourself into traffic and ragdoll on through and get try and get and try to get hit by cars. Ow. Damn. Because Because you're you know, well it's in the name, insurance fraud. You're trying to rack up enough damages to meet a certain cash total. There's that ceiling frog again. I'm gonna... I just restarted. I'm gonna go up there and check it out, because I want to know what the deal... Shotgun. What are you? Besides dead. I don't know what that was, but... No shotgun. Come back. I love you. You realize, of course, I do not have... Yep, not a chance of getting it to the end. But... Okay, but the awesome thing about insurance fraud in Saints Row 4 is you're doing it with superpowers, for one. And for another... It is the choice of music. You can actually have music outside your car now. You have to get into a car to start it, but that's neither here nor there. But one of the songs in the game is The Touch by Stan Bush. You may have heard it in Boogie Nights, but the first time it was used for anything, or one of the first times, was in Transformers the Movie, the animated one from 1986, and it is used when Optimus Prime fights Megatron and dies. But it's played largely through the scene where he goes charging through the Decepticon ranks and shoots a bunch of people, well, it's a bunch of Decepticons, and... You know, it's just there for him, uh, is there playing while he is being just as badass as he can possibly be. And there's just something absolutely wonderful about that playing in the background. While you're bouncing through traffic at super speed and getting hit by cars. And commenting on getting hit by cars. It's just, it was the best thing. I have not laughed that hard in forever. So yeah. So yeah, there were only a couple of games that I really wanted off the Steam sale. Saints Row 4 was one, DuckTales was another. Also got La Mulana because it was really cheap and I've heard good things about it. Pretty good so far. Pro easier than this, even though they're kind of similar in their theme of exploring ruins. And I also picked up Guacamelee because, well, it's a Metroidvania-type game where you play a luchador, and it was, like, 375, and how do you not? You know? So, yeah. I, I picked up some fun stuff. Yeah, I can just... Whoop. Careful now. Jump. I should have been able to make that. But, yeah, you know, I'm not, even though I have a lot of Steam stuff at this point, I'm actually not big on digital distribution. Any ch any opportunity I have to have a real copy of a game, I like to take it. But the thing is, Steam acknowledges, to my mind, Steam acknowledges the basic inferiority of imaginary copies of games by making them much cheaper. I mean, when they first come out, they're the same price as they'd be anywhere else, but you wait, and a Steam sale goes on, and you can get them for a human price. And that's what I did this week on the sale. I got a lot of things I'd been wanting at a decent price. So, of course, that's how I got this in FTL in the past, so... That's a good deal. Well, oh god, when he notices me, I die. Or, I take his boomerang! Got 
Gotcha. Oh, here we go again. Okay, controller. Let me down. Alright. Well, that's not bad, so... Let's see if I can get myself out of here alive. is, I swear, I can't... I'm pretty sure there was another game I'd really been wanting to get on uh, Steam that I got in the sale, and I can't remember what it is now. That's really just sort of sad. But... Oh! Ow! Piranha. Go to hell. Made it. Oh, that is just... Ah! Well, that solves half the problem. And that solves the other half. But... Yeah, so... Uh, actually, other than money, oddly enough, I've gotten nothing but games this holiday, which is... unusual for me anymore. I mean... There is something being of the generation that I am that is just very Christmassy about being able to sit down on Christmas with a new game like I could Saints Row. But... It's funny, I was reading on Twitter a lot of people talking about how they got a Wii U for their kids. Oh, I am dead. Yeah, that's a huge fish. But they got a Wii U for their uh, kids and they wanted everybody to be able to sit and play with it, and what they got instead was a, you know, like, two-hour-plus system update. And like I said on Twitter, you know, one day I will be able to sit around and, you know, dazzle your children and grandchildren with stories of consoles that, uh, that you could plug in and get working Christmas morning. Because this is, you know, this is the anomaly. Of course, you know, my parents used to uh, just actually check and make sure that uh, our gifts were working properly before they gave them to, you know, save themselves a lot of heartache later. And by heartache, I mean whining by us. But... That led to a fun story. Okay! So, yeah, okay, so yeah. Getting... going in the water washes off the, the bomb frogs. Good to know. Jump! But, let me tell you then, on, along those lines, ow, ow, and ow, let me tell you the story of Teddy Ruxpin. Um... Teddy Ruxpin was a teddy bear that told stories, for those who don't know. It has... I think they changed it in later versions to some to slightly lighter dead mechanisms, but Teddy Ruxpin told stories by virtue of a, t a tape deck in his chest. And he was, you know, animatronic. His face would move. His... Bomb frog. Let me move here, because it's going to stun me. I didn't fall on the spikes, and the monkey did, so I win. But, yeah, so its face would move, its eyes and mouth and controller, I tell you. Its eyes and mouth and ears would all move wh while it sat and told you a story. And it would come with, like, tape and storybook sets for you to use with it. And they got this for my brother for Istvan 82 one Christmas. And the first one they got, there had a bit of a problem. The tape player was damaged. And would not play at full speed. So... 
basically they got it home and they tested it in advance as any like I said as any good parent should and they got the demonically possessed Teddy Ruxpin because of course it's supposed to say in a chipper little voice hello my name is Teddy Ruxpin and what they got was hello my name is Teddy Ruxpin and so they were slightly it, very freaked out and I think understandably so Sadly, they took that one back, but, you know, can't blame them, but I would have liked to, to have heard it, and I never did. Of course, you get a similar effect when the batteries on a good Teddy Ruxpin start to go, so, you know, I got to hear something similar as time went on. Go! There we are. Let's leave. Okay. But... Yeah, that was... Oh, Lord. Well, the good news is that guy has a torch and not a... Okay! Interesting. He didn't throw until I threw. That's just fascinating uh, on some level to me. I don't know if you guys damage me or not. Don't want to know, but I will take this treasure. Ow. Die. Okay, torches burn spider webs too. That's good to know. I may have lost my torch again, but I'm pretty sure I did, but a noble sacrifice in my opinion, because lit two uh, uh, torches and got a man trap out of my way, so. Oh, that was lucky. Did you see those spikes in the darkness there? Did you see those spikes I just landed right on? But, you know... I think that's a good place to stop it for now. I hope everybody has had a good holiday, and by the time you see this video, a happy new year as well. And we will be back next week for more Spelunky, probably. Since I did actually accomplish a few little things this week, that is. So, that'll do it for now. Until next time, everybody have fun and take care. Later!